Joining me to break down the 147th running of the Preakness Stakes on 11 Alive is NBC Steve Kornacki. Steve, great to see you, the big board aficionado, which means we're going to have a little bit of fun with you today. I've got a pin in hand ready to go. So break down for me, Steve, what is the key to a big board when it comes to horse racing and how you prepare? <laughs> well, it's, uh, you know, it, it's you're looking at uh, what numbers can I find that can help make sense of the race that we're looking at here. You know, what numbers can I find to help compare the horses to each other? What numbers can I find that might point to a historical trend? Okay. Uh, certainly tried a whole bunch of them in the Kentucky Derby, and I can tell you none of them pointed to the winner, though. <laughs> you have picked winners in the past, though. Don't sell yourself short. So if I was <laughs> going to write anything on this board right now, what would you tell me to write? Um, I think you might... Uh, You'd circle who probably is going to be the favorite in the race. I think clearly the favorite is Epicenter. Okay. Um, you, you might take a look at a horse like uh, Armagnac, number seven. You might uh, write speed next to that in, in question mark. You might write that same thing next to the five uh, to early voting. Um, I, I, possibility that those are the horses. You try, try to kind of lay out how you think the, 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 the race is going to run out, who's play out, who is going to be. Uh, out front early is there going to be a lot of early speed that is something we saw in the Kentucky Derby how is that going to affect the shape of the race so those are two horses I think that might kind of get out in front early might dictate the pace of the race and then as I said I think Epicenter will clearly be the favorite and then from my standpoint it's you know is there anybody who can come from a little bit off that pace and uh uh, and, and maybe come in and, uh, and make some noise. So we like to look at the favorites. Obviously, that did not work out in the Kentucky Derby because we saw Epicenter was one of the co-favorites to win, and we saw one of the biggest upsets in Kentucky Derby history. So could we potentially see another huge upset, and which horse am I looking at to potentially do that? <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I don't think you're going to, just because the field is smaller, we're not going to see 80 to 1 in this race. But uh, you'll have some long shots in here. I, I think the longest shot on the board is probably going to be Fenwick, I, I, I tell you, I, I just don't see it, but I would have told you the exact same thing looking at Rich Strike and Rich Strike's past performances heading into the Kentucky Derby. So I suppose there's a universe where, where lightning could strike twice like that, but I think Fennec will be the longest shot on the board. Um, I think more realistically, if you were looking for a, a long shot in this race, um, I mentioned that that horse Armagnac um, is a little bit interesting to me, uh, has the potential maybe to to get out in front early um creative minister the the two horse is is a lightly raced horse who i think is going to be double digit odds um a horse that uh, has been kind of showing pretty dramatic rapid progression um so it'd be a, it would be an upset it would be a surprise it wouldn't be 80 to one but i i think i'm a little interested in in creative minister um a, a horse that i don't know if it's gonna be a big long shot but one that i'm very interested in is secret oath Ooh. The Philly, that's the girl taking on the boys. You know, I think there the morning line was nine to two, and it, it might not even be that much when this race goes off. But I'm very interested in in Secret Oath as the kind of horse who can, as I was saying, maybe sit off that pace a little bit. And Secret Oath, when she turns it on, she just blows past everyone. That's what she's been doing. She did that in the Kentucky Oaks to win. I've seen her do that in a number of other races. And maybe... You know, maybe the way this race plays out, there's the opportunity for her to do that here. And, and you can get a little bit more money on a horse like Secret Oath than you would Epicenter. So glad that you said Secret Oath because that's the horse that I will be picking in the Preakness this time because it is go. a Philly and it's possible that she could win. She's got a Hall of Fame trainer. Okay, so for the casual fan who's just watching horse racing, maybe for the first time on Saturday, there is no Triple Crown winner this year because Rich Strike will not be racing on Saturday. So why should the casual fan be interested in the Preakness? Yeah, I think, well, one of those angles we were just talking about, I think always makes a horse racing interesting, especially a high stakes horse race. And that is when you got a filly in there, when you got a girl taking on the boys, it's unusual. Uh, it's uncommon. Um, Secret Oath running in this race with a bunch of Colts. Um, you know, we've seen it before. Actually, a couple of years ago, we saw a filly named Swiss Skydiver win the Preakness. We saw one other this century, Rachel Alexandra, do it. Um, but there aren't that many that actually run in these triple crown races. So I always think that's a really interesting dynamic. And, and again, Secret Oath is the kind of horse that I think has a chance. You know, I, I think Epicenter is the most likely winner of this race, but I, I, you know, I think Secret Oath, it's, it's more than just a novelty to have a filly like Secret Oath in this race. I think she has an actual chance to win it. Um, I think Epicenter 
is an interesting story, even though, you know, from a betting standpoint, Epicenter is probably going to be like even money, maybe even less than even money. Um, just makes so much sense logically as the as the winner of this race. Um, you know, I think you're, you're legit. There's a legitimate possibility of looking at, at Epicenter and seeing the best three year old horse in the country this year, a horse who could be on his way to winning a number of prestigious races uh, this year. If you look at that Kentucky Derby, you know, the pace was just so hot in that race. They were going so fast, so early in that race. Most of those horses who were near the front just couldn't sustain it. They all fell back. That's what opened the door for Rich Strike to come flying and pass all those horses and win the race. The amazing thing to me about Epicenter is Epicenter didn't win the race, but every other horse who was running around Epicenter in the Kentucky Derby ended up finishing like 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th. Epicenter didn't fall back, didn't fade. Actually, you know, had the lead yeah. until the final yards of the race was able to withstand just a pace that would just do in almost any other horse. And if it weren't for that sort of freakish move that, that Rich, Rich Strike made, Epicenter would have won the Kentucky Derby. So I think even in losing to an 80 to one shot like Rich Strike, Rich, Rich Strike, Epicenter really, really impressed me. And I think the Preakness is an opportunity for Epicenter to kind of announce to the world the quality of the horse that he is. And I think if you, if you get a horse of that kind of quality, that's a sight to see. Okay, Steve, last thing for you. Uh, you've seen a little bit of my scribbling here. I am going to put your favorite. Who are you picking for Saturday, Saturday's Preakness? Who's it going to be? It's good. I'll tell you what, in the Kentucky Oaks a couple of weeks ago, I made an impassioned case uh, on the air for Secret Oath. I was so excited to watch her win that race. It is going to be awfully hard for me not to pick Secret Oath, not to go with Secret Oath again in the in the uh, Preakness. Okay, so Steve is going Secret Oath. I am also going to go Secret Oath. And no, that's not just because you picked it, because you heard me say it before, Steve. Anything that I'm missing on this board, let me know. What do we got? Well, I'll tell you, the, the, the trendy one, I'm not going to pick, but the trendy one, I think a lot of people are going to pick. If it's not Epicenter, early voting, uh, I think early voting might be the second choice on the board. That trainer for that horse, Chad Brown, took this exact same route a few years ago, five years ago, skipped the Kentucky Derby, had run well in a race in New York, the Wood Memorial, targeted the Preakness, is, it did that five years ago with a horse named Cloud Computing, won the Preakness, is doing it again with early voting. So I think early voting is a bit of a trendy pick as well. And again, is one of those horses I think that could be out there on the lead or very close to the lead at the very start of the race. You had speed question mark on early voting, which means everyone should be paying attention to this one. Steve, thanks for your time. Appreciate it. We love everything that you do. And make sure you watch the Preakness this Saturday on 11 Alive.